Some of us traveled all the way up to his brain and some to his spinal cord through his nerves. We were sneaky, so we hid well from his immune system by avoiding his bloodstream. There, we replicated inside the mind's nerve cells and stayed dormant for about two months. During your hibernating period, did you encounter any resistance with the man immune system? Actually, no. Most of the immune system is kept out of a human's brain by their blood-brain barrier, so we were able to rest in peace. Since we did not tinker with anything in the body yet, there was no antibody response. But isn't the immune system's job to protect the human from diseases? Well, yeah, the macrophages tried to mark us and engulf some of us, but we were too overwhelming and we stayed hidden. We provoked a poor immunological response for the man, and that is why his immune system was incapable to protect him. And this goes for everyone? No one has any sort of immunity towards you guys? We are able to suppress cell-mediated immunity early during the infection by stopping the production of interferon. The phosphorus protein in the rabies virus prevents interferon signal transduction pathways, which is one of the reasons that decrease the immune response of our victims. A few individuals have measurable and neutralizing antibody towards us, but it rarely appears in cerebrospinal fluid, where it is most needed. So all in all, it doesn't really help. Well then, what happened when you guys woke up? When we became active, we started something you guys called the prodromal stage. Some of us enter the central nervous system located in the brain, then we started replicating. This caused encephalitis, an acute inflammation of the man's brain, and meningoencephalitis, which is an inflammation of the brain and menings, including the dura matter, arachnoid, and pia matter that line the skull and vertebral canal and encloses the brain and spinal cord. The rest of us made our way to the spinal cord via the peripheral nervous system's afferent nerves, nerves that carry impulses toward the central nervous system. After that, we moved from the brain to salivary glands and the saliva. Consequently, the man started to experience rabies symptoms after three days, which lasted for approximately a week. What were some of the symptoms that the man experienced during this phase? He had intense itches near the wound, he had headaches, a fever, pharyngitis, which is the inflammation of the pharynx that causes sore throat, insomnia, diarrhea, salivation, and emesis, which is the action or process of vomiting. What happened next? Then came another phase in which you guys call it the acute neurologic phase. This is when there are clear signs of a development of a central nervous system disease. It lasted for around five days, and the man experienced twitches in his muscle, painful erections, and convulsions. Sometimes hosts would die during this phase, but our host was lucky and only became paralyzed progressively. Oh, well, that's fortunate and unfortunate. So, are we approaching the end of your adventure? Yeah, now this is the last part of our invasion. The man ended up being in coma around 10 days after we reached his central nervous system. Since he did not receive intensive supportive care, his respiratory system became to falter, and he passed away due to cardiac arrest. Whoa, now that was intense. Hold up, you were saying after all this time, even near the end of his life, the man's immune system didn't fight back at all? Like I said, we were too overwhelming and we stayed too well hidden for his body to fight back. By the time we became active, it was too late for the immune system to react. But if we were not rabies and just a simple little virus that causes something like the common cold, then this would be a whole different case. Hmm, how so? Mm, it's a long story. Let's start with the cell-mediated immunity. If the man's immune system was to fight back, the macrophage would consume us first and display our antigens on itself. Then, helper T-cells bind to macrophages and they are activated. The activated helper T-cells then divide and some helper T-cells go activate the proper B-cells, which is part of the humoral immunity. I'll explain later what exactly the humoral immunity is. After the helper T-cells activate the B-cells, they activate cytotoxic T-cells and also produce memory T-cells. The cytotoxic T-cells drains out the virus's content in an affected cell, and the memory T-cells just remembers what we look like, so the immune system will be able to fight back even faster when we come back. So now, what about humoral immunity? Created using Powtoon!